Hello Wolfpack, we're back here. We're analyzing WAN chain, uh, WAN USD. We've got the weekly chart, the 4 hourly chart, the daily chart, and the Bitcoin pair. And we're also going to be comparing it to ICX on the daily chart as well. Um, I've looked into WAN chain in the past. I've gone over the fundamentals multiple times. If you want to see a fundamental analysis on WAN chain, check out my last video I did on WAN chain. Right, I'll make sure to link that down below. Uh, there's a whole section at the start of the video. I think it goes for about five or six minutes where I go into the fundamentals. I just want to say, um, without going into it too much, the fundamentals on WAN chain are absolutely superb, right? I don't think I've seen a coin, or I, at least I don't think I've seen many coins uh, with fundamentals that good uh, that are so low on the market cap ranking. So definitely go and check that out. But, you know, this video is purely for price action, purely for TA. I want to keep it short. I want to keep it sweet. I have some new information to apply uh, to the WAN chain chart, uh, especially on the weekly chart, okay? And I want to be, you know, getting to that as soon as possible. But before we get into that, let's get into the short-term price action. Okay, let's start on the four hourly chart. Uh, what we can see on the four hourly chart is Wan Chain coming up here after a double bottom uh, at around, we've removed the resistance zones just to make this very simple here, at around the 70 cent region, we double bottomed in that region and we've kind of headed up in the short term. Uh, what our critical levels are on Wan Chain is flipping this whole entire construction here uh, from about $1, right? This $1 construction, we can see we've found it for resistance multiple, multiple times, um, you know, within this region. If we flip $1, what we actually be doing is flipping, that's not only flipping a resistance zone, but also creating a higher high, right? If we get rejected from $1, we can see that would be very similar to the rejection we had here, and we will possibly be heading back down uh, to retest this region and probably heading below that. So it is very critical for Wan Chain to take back $1, and obviously that confidence in the market is going to be coming from the strength on Bitcoin. Uh, uh, unfortunately, Ethereum has been lagging, which meant that, which means that altcoins have been lagging as well. But flipping one dollar and creating a new higher high uh, would be bullish before, you know, possibly heading up to about one dollar and ten cents, you know, or even higher here about one dollar thirty uh, before coming back down and correcting uh, and flipping that region and then heading upwards again. One dollar thirty might be a little bit too optimistic there, but we want to see a flip of that zone. ASAP, right? We don't want to be grinding too much because the last time we grinded in this region, uh, we ended up rejecting downwards, right? We don't want to see that happen. Um, what we do have and what we can say uh, for WAN chain here is we do have a, a bullish a bullish and a bearish RSI divergence, right? We have a bullish RSI divergence in which we were heading downwards on the RSI in the bottom. We're making uh, lower lows on the RSI and also making higher lows. And then we're also seeing a bearish RSI divergence in which we're making uh, lower highs and we're making higher highs on the price. So mixed RSI, um, but what we are seeing as well, which is more convincing and which leans me more to the bullish side, um, is the fact that we're seeing, you know, a potential bullish MACD cross that will be coming in if we see uh, upwards momentum. So potentially if we break $1, if we get a wick above $1, that RSI, that bullish MACD cross will come through and it will send us a lot higher before we retest this region and head upwards again. So the ultimate goal on WAN chain in the short term is breaking $1. Once we break $1, you know, as I said, we need to be making a higher low, uh, which can come anywhere above $1, preferably. Um, what we also need to be doing in the short term as well in the coming weeks is looking at this region here at around uh, $1.32, which is where we rejected from uh, on the last attempt up in early September. So we want to be flipping these two regions. These are two critical resistance zones in the short term. As for support, we're looking at support um, within this region here at around 84 cents and above. If we're above 84 cents, it is my opinion that Wan Chain is not doing too badly. Um, if we want to look even shorter term, right, we want to be making uh, new higher lows consistently. We've seen a higher low here, higher low here, uh, and a higher low here. So ideally, anything above 91 cents uh, would be ideal. If we come down back here to like 94 cents and then head upwards over $1, great. That's a great scenario for me for Wan Chain. Um, that's for short-term price, price action. Uh, we look at the daily chart here, we get a medium-term view. And what we can see is a textbook cup and handle formation for Wan Chain. Also a double bottom on this support region here, uh, which is held, you know, which is actually a bear market resistance zone. We faced that during the bear market, but we broke above it in this bull market. We flipped it again for support here between 50 cents and around 40, 43 or 44 cents. Um, and we've headed upwards, right? We've formed this cup and handle formation. We saw a descending channel, which is the handle. We broke out above it briefly, which is a fake out. Um, but, you know, that obviously didn't last and that was due to um, you know a parabolic move on Bitcoin that was rejected we've recently come back down during the, you know the result of this uh, fake out move or whatever you want to
want to call it. We've come back down and we've actually flipped this channel for support on two separate occasions, holding it for support both times. Uh, what we can do on WAN chain, right? And the reason why I have this, um, oh, that was an accident. The reason why I have this parallel line here, um, not parallel line, but a reason why I have this trend line here is that actually is my price prediction for WAN chain uh, in the medium term, right? What we do, and this is one of many ways to measure a price prediction based on um, the cup and handle formation is we take the wick down, the lowest wick down on the bottom right of the cup, and we bring it all the way um, to the first test of the channel top, okay? And then we can apply that, um, you know, usually to the breakout point, but I'm not actually gonna count that due to the fact that I think it is a fake out. Um, we can apply that to the most recent retest uh, of the channel. And what we can actually see is that WAN chain will possibly, and you know, this is according to the carpet handle formation, WAN chain will be moving to its critical resistance zone uh, between $1.24 and $1.36, just testing the bottom of that uh, by October 24th, sorry, October 25th, right? So within a fortnight and a bit, WAN chain will be reaching uh, $1.24 in the medium term, according to this fractal, uh, which would make sense with what, is, with what is happening in the rest of the market, right? Bitcoin's moving up massively. Ethereum's on the verge of a breakout. It has seen some preliminary rejections, but, you know, it doesn't make sense for WAN chain to go down. So, you know, this makes perfect sense to me. Um, what we're actually seeing on WAN chain on the weekly chart as well, and we can compare this to ICX icon, right? And uh, this is the new information I want to bring you guys in this video, right? Because this is the information, uh, this is the reason that I'm actually making this video. I'm not just making it to stuff around, right? I'm providing new information, uh, adjusting my price predictions based on this new information. And what we can see on WanChain and ICX, as I said at the start of the video, ICX is basically the Korean version, the South Korean version of WanChain, right? Very simply, if you want to have it at a fundamental level, that's the basic understanding. You can have it, it's a South Korean version of WanChain. What we can notice is ICX ICX came onto the market in 2017, October 2017. WanChain came onto the market in uh, March 2018. Okay, so WanChain actually came onto the market after the top of the bull run. WanChain has not seen a bull run yet. ICX has. And what we can notice if we zoom up on ICX here and take out that bull run, uh, what we can actually see from this blue line is it looks very, very, very similar to the WanChain chart, right? very similar to the ICX chart here on WanChain uh, from that point. So now my reasoning for bringing this up is assuming WanChain actually was in, you know, this is this is extrapolating data here, but assuming WanChain um, was actually in the 2017 bull market and assuming that it continued to perform uh, during that hypothetical period, uh, the same as ICX, as we are seeing in this current bull market, as we have seen since April, 2017, WanChain, should have reached much higher prices. And this is where my price prediction comes in for WanChain, right? What we can see is ICX from this hypothetical point uh, it, at around $4.96, right? It actually was around 168% from its all-time high, right? If WanChain was around in 2017, it would have been, you know, from this hypothetical point here on April uh, 30th, 2018, and we go 168% from that point, we can see that WanChain would have actually topped out in the bull run at around 28 USD, right? Hopefully that makes sense, right? Very confusing to try and explain. Essentially what I'm doing is I'm observing the fact that WanChain and Icon have historically moved identically to each other. I'm observing the fact that ICX was released onto the market in the bull market in 2017. WanChain was released onto the market after the bull market in 2017. If WanChain was in the market while ICX was in the market in October through to January 2017, according to the charts, according to the fact, and this is relying on the fact that they've moved very similar, you know, in the past and in the present, WanChain would have reached 28 USD in the 2017 and 2018 bull market if it was around in that bull market, right? And what this actually tells us, right? And this, you know, it might seem bold to say, but what this actually tells us is that, you know, when have you ever seen a cryptocurrency in a bull market that is still somewhat relevant, not reached its previous all-time high, right? I think that this all-time high made here on WanChain at 10 USD was in, in a sense, a fake all-time high, right? Because it wasn't a all-time high made in a bull market. It was an all-time high made in a dead cap bounce. Okay, we can see we had this dead cap bounce here on Icon, and this dead cap bounce here on Icon is the all-time high we made here in WanChain, 
right? We didn't see the bull market period. This was the bull market, this black circle here. We didn't see that bull market period on Wanchain. It wasn't around, right? If it was around 28 USD would have been the price target that we've had uh, for that bull market, right? So hypothetically, Wanchain should have reached 28 USD if it was if it was going to, be, going to be performing in the same way that ICX performed in 2017, 2018. So what we can assume from that and Wanchain, you know, has come out with consistent partnerships, consistent uh, new coin listings on exchanges, uh, you know, consistent updates, um, you know, tech updates. They've released marketing. They've released, you know, they've hired new employees. They've got this partnership with State Grid Corporation of China. You know, this is a coin that hasn't slowed down. There's no reason, there's no doubt in my mind why Wanchain can't reach 28 USD, which is actually its realistic previous all-time high, right? That's where it should have been in 2017, 2018, if it saw that bull market. So in this bull market, I see no reason why it cannot reach 28 USD, right? And I could say, I could even go as far to say, I, I see no reason why it couldn't double that, but I'm not going to say that, right? Because that's too optimistic. We're down here at 96 cents. We can't be speaking about things like 50 USD right now, but you know, my price prediction and my conserv I would say it's a conservative price prediction uh, for Wanchain is 28 USD in this bull market. And what that price prediction would actually be is 23, uh, basically a 23 to 24 X from current prices. And that would be to achieve the all time high that we should have made in 2017 and 2018 if Wanchain was in the market in that bull market, right? Obviously it wasn't. Obviously there's a fair bit of data extrapolation and, you know, you know, kind of being optimistic with uh, the uh, the theory and the chart theory that's going on here. But essentially that's kind of my thought process for Wanchain right now. It should have reached $28 in 2017, 2018. There's no reason why it can't reach it now with all of the new developments that's been happening in the market, right? So 28 USD seems reasonable to me, all right? And even in terms of market cap, that seems very reasonable. Wanchain uh, is around 260th on coin market cap ranking, uh, going up 24x while the whole market goes up 10x. Um, would not put us any higher than about uh, 100 on coin market cap ranking, just off the top of my head, right? Maybe 75th, right? So very, very logical. Um, you know, if you think about, you know, Wanchain being uh, in a partnership with the second biggest company in the entire world. And you think about whether it's logical for it to be at 100 on the market cap ranking, seems pretty logical to me, right? Seems pretty logical to me. Um, if we look at the Bitcoin pair, uh, we can see, you know, what, what is there to say, right? We're flatlining, right? We're obviously flatlining. Um, that's because Wanchain's only really seen a bear market. Um, but, you know, what we can kind of observe here, and, 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 and even though I said we're going to reach all-time highs on the USD, um, in my opinion, I don't think we're going to be reaching all-time highs in the Bitcoin pair, right? Because we never really reach all-time highs in the Bitcoin pair. There's simply more coins in the market, uh, more money spread out in more places. But what we can list off is some important resistance zones on Wanchain and support zones, right? We can list off the fact that we have a resistance zone here. You know, starting here at this all-time high, which we made uh, in April, the local high at around 4,400 sats, right? That would be our first target. Our second target on Wanchain would be reaching this resistance area here at around 7,300 sats. Um, our third target here would be around uh, anywhere in this region between 12,000 sats. Um, you know, and that, that's probably where I'm expecting to go in the bull market, right? 12,000 sats. Um, as for support and the downside, the lowest place we could be going, and we saw this during the, during uh, during about December 2020 here, so just before New Year's, we saw Wanchain go to its lowest point on the Bitcoin pair at around 800 sats, right? Do I think we can go to 800 sats again? No, I don't think we're going there again. Um, I do think we'll possibly go down to this support region here um, at around 1,400 sats because I think that Bitcoin has to make the first move in its bull market. And we've kind of seen this happen already. Bitcoin's been moving up parabolically and altcoins have been lagging massively, right? Bitcoin has to move first and then money will flow into altcoins. So naturally, Wanchain's Bitcoin dominance will probably be going down in the short term to around 1,400 sats. That's just a prediction. And then, uh, you know, as December and January approach, we'll be zooming upwards here, um, you know, as we make new all time highs on Wanchain. And as, you know, altcoins outperform Bitcoin. Bitcoin stagnates and Ethereum, for example, goes parabolic uh, during that December to January period. Uh, that's when we'll be seeing the explosion on Wanchain on the Bitcoin pair and the USD pairs. Um, so I hope that explanation about the one week chart and my price prediction for Wanchain wasn't too complicated. It's kind of hard to explain, right? I understand it's kind of hard to explain, but I'll briefly just say it again, right? And I'll say it as simply as possible. Wanchain and Icon do the same thing. Right, they do the same thing in terms of price action. Icon was released into the market in October 2017. It saw the bull market. 
Wanchain was released a few months after, after the bull market. It didn't have the bull market explosion in price. Wanchain saw a dead cap bounce explosion in price, just like Icon, right? Assuming that Wanchain was released into the market, sorry, you know, under the, you know, if, if, if we were going to, uh, you know, hypothetically, if Wanchain was released into the market in October 2017, you know, and given the fact that it copies ICX exactly, it should have reached a price of 28 USD in that bull market. So we can kind of, you know, extrapolate that data and say that Wanchain's real all-time high, you know, it's real hypothetical all-time high is 28 USD. And that's where we should be reaching in this bull market. And we should be surpassing that. All right, guys, very confusing video, but I hope you understand. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something about Wanchain. Let me know what you think, right? Because it's a bit of a controversial um, kind of way to analyze a chart, but let me know what you think. Um, thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one.